Do you want to get rid of annoying background noise like the stupid fan behind me? Literally with the click of a button, just like that. I'll be showing you how to do this in OBS Studio or Streamlabs for your stream. So that way you can hide the screams of your captive bodies down. I mean, the kids in your background. Yeah, let's go with that. So if that sounds good to you, drop a quick like on this video so other streamers can find this video. Let's ignore the fact that I'm in my kitchen and let's jump into it. So the very first thing that we want to do is open up OBS Studio or Streamlabs. And if you're wondering why I got this starting soon screen, I actually got it for my streamer starter pack, which I'll leave linked in the description down below. But the first thing we need to do is obviously make sure our microphone is added in Streamlabs or OBS. This is literally the exact same process for both. So don't freak out if you're using Streamlabs. So first thing, we're going to go to the settings in the bottom right corner. Make sure our microphone is connected, which yours probably probably already is, but you'll go to settings, audio, and then mic auxiliary audio. Make sure your microphone is selected here. Hit apply, hit OK, and then you'll see your microphone bouncing up and down right here. So as you can see now, I have my microphone connected and you can hear that stupid fan in the background. And if you guys are worried about your keyboard clacking sounds too, I'll try and help you mitigate those sounds as well. But to keep it very, very simple, because I know you guys are just as lazy as me, one, we're going to turn down the volume just a smidge because you don't want that thing clipping in the red because clipping is bad. Unless you're on Twitch, then, you know, clipping is fine. But we're going to then go and click these three dots over where your microphone is. We're going to click that. We're going to go to filters inside OBS or Streamlabs. Same thing. So click filters. So once we're under filters, all we have to do is drag this up a little bit so we can see our microphone right there. And now I'm just not gonna talk so you guys can see the fan still triggering the microphone. So I'm just gonna shut up for a second, which is hard to do. You can see it's bouncing around right around 45 or negative 45 decibels. So we're gonna click this plus button under filters and we're gonna see two different options here. So I'll go over both, but the first one is the easiest and you guys know I like easy. So we're gonna hit noise suppression and hit okay and boom. I'm just gonna shut up and we'll see if the background noise is there, but you could probably already hear it. And you can see it's gone. So that's perfect, that's great. But you notice that we actually have different methods here. So you have the good quality, more CPU usage, which I highly recommend to everybody. But if you're using a potato toaster, microwave looking ass, toaster, laptop, computer looking thing, then you might need to use Speaks, which is low CPU usage, low quality. And if we switch to that, you'll notice that it totally degrades the quality of your microphone. But if your computer can't handle it and you're really balling on a budget and struggling, then you might be able to want to use this. And so what I would do is I would drag it more to the right here so that way it is slightly less bad. But this I would avoid at all costs unless you really just have no other option. So I always recommend using this one, the good quality one. And literally you could just do it as that and you could be good with it. This should also reduce the keyboard clacking as well. But if you're really worried about keyboard clacking, then one, you should try and get a less noisy keyboard. Two, you should try moving your microphone further away from your keyboard. And three, just overall, try and mitigate the sounds itself. And then the noise suppression should also help suppress that keyboard clacking as well. But also make sure that your microphone's pointed in the right direction because there's a lot of times where your microphone will be pointing up or down or left or right. And unless you actually look at how the microphone is designed, you might not have the correct trajectory on where you're supposed to be talking to. Like this is an end address, so I'm talking right here, which is fine, but some microphones will be on the top or the bottom, and if you have it like this, obviously it's gonna sound like crap. And plus, if it's on the bottom side, it's pointing towards the keyboard, it's picking up the keyboard clacking more than your voice, so food for thought for you guys. But another option, like I mentioned earlier, is I'll hide this so that way you can hear how loud the fan is again. We'll hit the plus button, and we'll go to noise gate. So we can hit okay. And this is a little bit more complicated and it's kind of difficult to wrap your head around how this works. So if you don't get it the first time around, don't feel stupid. Basically how this works is you have an open threshold, which is going to decide at what decibel level. So how loud your microphone is going to be before it actually allows your microphone audio to pass through. So the lower that this is, the quieter that I have to be in order for it to go through. So anything that is negative 55 decibels or louder is immediately gonna go through. And if I have it closed, the close option is when it's going to not let it through anymore. So in this case scenario, it's essentially finding out how loud this fan background noise is. So I remember earlier in the video, it was around like negative 45 decibels. So we're gonna set the threshold to about, mm, let's do negative 
40 decibels ish so give about five space just give or take you can play to taste and ear so now if you change your clothes we're going to change this to maybe let's say a little bit lower let's do negative 45 so i'm going to be quiet and you can hear it's kind of working so we'll set the open up a little bit higher and we'll boost this one up too and now we'll see if it goes and now you can see that this has also started to get rid of the fan background noise. I'm not as big of a fan of it, but you guys can find a certain use case scenario where maybe the noise suppression might not work for you, and you might need to use the noise gate instead. Then for the attack, hold, and release, honestly, you don't have to really worry about it. The only thing that you really have to know is that if you're like cutting out, then you might want to adjust the hold time because you might have it too short. So you might want to increase that number, but usually these default values won't give you too much trouble. And ultimately at the end of the day, I recommend literally just keeping it easy, noise suppression right here and you'll be good to go. But if you want to take your microphone sound to the next level, watch this video to the side of me. I break it down step-by-step step to improve your crappy microphone into a pro microphone. So give that a watch. My name's Cody and I'll see you in the next one.